we're going to try to develop some intuition for these uh, stationary distributions here and um, <clears throat> so you know what does that mean we're essentially trying to kind of reconcile the, the, the kind of the mathematical definition which is in terms of the global balance uh, equations right it essentially is saying that if you have a stationary distribution pi that's just uh, you know first it's a distribution it has values that uh, are assumed between 0 and 1 and, and the sum of the entries is is um, is 1 right and then more importantly it satisfies these global uh, balance equations for all y with respect to the one step transition probabilities of the chain there are also the the local balance conditions which I'll come back to but you know the global balance um, requirement is sort of the more general uh, condition for um, for a stationary distribution so you know, in this mathematical definition, we're trying to reconcile with the more intuitive notion that pi x is the probability that the chain is going to be in state x after a long time. Right, so how do we reconcile these things and you know, kind of hopefully to get us a, at least part of the way there, uh, I want to prove with you this, this lemma here, right? So first of all, the lemma is going to teach us something in terms of what it's actually saying. And then the proof, um, which is a proof by induction, if you sneak ahead, you kind of see that. Um, it's a good exercise, right? So induction is this um, sort of pretty useful tool for, for Markov chain analysis. And you know, if you search Ross, you'll certainly come across it and um, uh, useful for, for proving a lot of different statements. So we'll get some practice with induction. You'll see a different flavor of this proof in the uh, Markov chain supplement note. Uh, and so uh, definitely take a look at that. But before we skip ahead here, let me just read, read you the lemma and kind of uh, let's see what or what we can take away from it. So, you know, we start with a Markov chain, not a surprise, and when when not mentioned, we assume that it's homogeneous. So when somebody gives you a Markov chain and says nothing else, you can assume that it's homogeneous and that it has, therefore, uh, these one-step transition probabilities, PXY. Um, and you know here that there's more right we're also told that there exists a stationary distribution for 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 the chain x right so pi is a stationary distribution so these one step transition probabilities also uh, will kind of lead to this condition right this global balance condition is, is something that we also have um, at our disposal all right so that's kind of the first part we have a markov chain which means that we have a bunch of one step transition probabilities a bunch of numbers that are you know uh, you get between 0 and 1 and sum to 1 with respect to the second coordinate. Um, we have a stationary distribution, meaning that these global, equa global balance equations are satisfied. And the second part is saying, suppose also that uh, xm, which is a random variable, as we know, right, is distributed, that's what that tilde notation means, distributed as pi, right? So distributed as the distribution pi, and this is going to be true for some time m. Uh, this right here in parentheses is just um, saying exactly what that notation, what this notation uh, is, um, but it's saying it sort of more uh, kind of precisely, right? The probability that xm is equal to y is equal to pi y, right? That's exactly what it means for xm to be distributed as pi. So, you know, obviously that's going to have some consequences, and that's on the third line, uh, but. You know, maybe even before we, we get to the consequence of this, what exactly, what exactly does this mean? Um, you know, I guess you could think about it as the chain, you know, has been running for some amount of time, and, and at this magic time m, it all of a sudden finds itself distributed according to pi, right? All of a sudden, its distribution is pi, right? For whatever reason, right? It could be dumb luck, maybe some, uh, I don't know, some d divine intervention or something. But that, you know, there's this magic time m and the chain is running and all of a sudden it just falls into this distribution pi. So that's kind of the, the, the setup of the story. And then what happens, right? So this third line is what happens. And, uh, you know, the main takeaway is that it remains in that stationary distribution forever, right? Which is, the, in other words, to say that for all k greater than or equal to m, xk equal to y is equal to pi y. All right, so the distribution of x at any point in time after m is exactly pi. And, you know, we can discuss a little bit what, why, you know, stationarity is the word to use here. 
this last line is in fact the definition of what's called a stationary process, especially if you put m, or actually if you put m equal to zero, that defines um, what's called a stationary process, which is a process that uh, at every single time behaves uh, according to the same exact distribution that doesn't know what time it is, right? So the left-hand side depends on k, but the right-hand side, side is saying, no, we don't know anything about k, right? So every single day, this process is not the same, but it um, it has a distribution that doesn't know right what time uh, it is, right? The same distribution every single time after time m. Right? So, in other words, sort of the sum total takeaway is that once you hit this kind of uh, you know once you hit this magical distribution pi, you you stay in it f forever, right? There's no leaving it after. This is you know so. In terms of the stationary, in terms of kind of stationary processes, you can see how the, the term stationary distribution is motivated. Another term that y you may be familiar with is the equilibrium distribution. So sometimes stationary a stationary distribution is called the equilibrium distribution. Those are exactly the same thing, and from the equilibrium point of view, it's saying that once a system modeled by Markov chain hits the equilibrium, it never leaves it. Right? It remains in equilibrium forever. Right? All right, so now I guess we're at the proof part, right? Hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of a sense of you know, how to, or you know, gives you some way of making sense of the, this, um, this stationary distribution concept. Um, you know, the, the proof, right? So <clears throat> anytime, I guess, yeah, anytime someone asks you to, to prove something is true for, for every integer or some amount of integers, right? You always want to try to throw induction on it, right? And here we're, we're being asked you know, m is fixed, prove it for every integer k greater than m. Uh, and so, you know, induction is on the table. We're going to start with that. And there are two ingredients with, with induction, right? A base case and then an inductive hypothesis. And then hopefully that follows up through, uh, extends to the entire uh, proof. So what's the, what's the base case? Usually, I guess usually it's zero here we're starting with m and going forward so the base case is really going to be k equals m okay so k equals m so how do we you know we need to prove it and i guess you know you may notice already there's not that much to prove um right this condition here already gives us the right to find right this for k equals m right we already have this, the, the the result Right, so the base case is essentially given, right? Nothing, nothing to prove, right? Check, good. Um, the inductive hypothesis, uh, you know, so it's there you always assume for, for some time, some prior time, and, and prove for, for some, you know, for one step ahead, right? And, that, and that's why this really fits so well with Markov chains, right? So you have one step transition probability, so the inductive hypothesis is telling you, you know, something's true for, for, uh, for time k minus one, and then you know it's kind of like asking, well, let's let's just take one more step forward, and so um, you know we're going to start with this equation here, and <clears throat> you know maybe you see how to how to establish it. Um, you know, it certainly is it's sensible, right? It's it's saying if the chain at time k is equal to y, that's another way of saying if the chain being an x, and then taking one step from x to y, and my sum here. A little bit of a correction. This is going to be over all x. Uh, z z was variable. Used when I was writing this up for the first time. So you know, sum over x. So for every x that we were in, we just took a step from x to y, and you know, it, it's sensible, right? That I'm going to prove it rigorously in in a moment. But just to come back to this induction point a little bit, let's say that this is true, right? And I'll I'll show you how to get this if you don't see it already. If this is true, then then we're all set, right? This part right here is true by the inductive hypothesis. What does it mean to be true by the inductive hypothesis? It means that it satisfies this claim here. So this part right here is just equal to pi x, right? That's what that's what it means, right? If we assume the statement's true for k minus one, that's exactly what it means. And now, just apply global balance, right? Just read it off from here over to this side. This is equal to 
pi y, right? And that's, you know, that's it. That establishes, right, the, the, the whole thing, right, by induction, right? Prove the base case, assume true for k minus 1, proved it for the next step, therefore, by induction, it's true for all times after the base case, right, after n. So, you know, hopefully that was convincing, and if not, you can try to look at some other inductive arguments in, in ROS to, to kind of catch up a little bit. But uh, let's back up for now to right, th this original statement here. Right, I kind of left this on the, on the table, and you know, it's certainly certainly it makes sense. But you know, is it really true? And you know, how does one approach to establishing this rigorously? Well, <coughs> I mean, you're kind of being asked for the, the, this probability, so it makes sense to start with this. But you know that you need to involve the induction hypothesis somehow. So like, you know, you kind of play around with it, and y you know, you sort of. It makes sense at least to try either the conditioning on the previous event or try the joint probability. Let me let me write it as the joint probability, and you can kind of yourself try to um, reverse engineer their argument, however you, you like to think about it. But if I do start with the joint probability, then I would just write the probability that x k is equal to y joint with the probability xk minus 1 is equal to z. This is equal to, this is by definition of conditional probability, the same exact event conditioned on k minus 1 equals z. Right? I'm trying to create this one step, uh, kind of one step backtrack one step to the to k minus 1 is equal to z probability x k minus 1 is equal to z right so hopefully you see what's going on here right this is and I don't need to say z again z was something I used before okay so x and x here and x here okay so hopefully that fixes it um, so so why is this true, right? This is by definition of conditional probability, right? It's the joint probability divided by the event that I'm conditioning on, right? So if I just divide this over, it just follows by the conditional probability. And then, you know, all that's left is to really, um, you know, we need to get rid of that joint distribution. And all you do is you just sum both sides over x. It's true for every x. So just sum it over, uh, over x. And what happens is, um, so let's see, so this term right here, right this term is just that and this term hopefully you recognize this as the one step transition probability from x to y the only kind of little catch here is again the step the, the this chain is time homogeneous right and therefore it doesn't really care uh, when you know when this one step is taken right the probability of going from x to y in one step doesn't have to be from time 0 to 1 or time 4 to time 5. In here, we're just going to say it's from time k minus 1 to k, right? The important thing for a homogeneous, this is for a homogeneous chain only, for the homogeneous chain, it's only important that we're taking one step, right? And so in one step, we go from x to y, and it doesn't matter from at what time it was to what time it was, right? One step is all, all that matters. And so if you sum this over, you know, we have this term is equal to that, this term is equal to this, um, and now just sum over x, and what you'll notice is that on this side you'll get, you know, the right sum, right? We already had these two terms matching, and on that side, well, if you, you know, you're essentially integrating out um, all the possibilities, right? By summing over all x, it's saying uh, that x k is equal to y, and x k minus one was either this or that or this or that, right? And you're summing up over all possible. Uh, outcomes, all possibilities, 
And so in the end, that leaves you with just the probability that x um, uh, k is equal to y. Right? And you can check out the, the proof in the supplement um, to see how this was done maybe a, a even more rigorously with conditional expectations. Right? And there it's kind of you're summing up over an indicator, and, and that's what gets rid of this part, right? But um, you know, hopefully you kind of understand why um, the sum over all possible choices, um, and this is what's called integrating out uh, one of the variables in the in the joint uh, distribution. So um, yeah, so that concludes this segment.